select. On vocals, we have Sona. <laughs> Sandeep. Shervani. And I should note that Shervani has also taken the lead on all the marketing messages and materials that you've seen and has done a wonderful job, as you can tell by the audience here today. <laughs> Serbi, who is vocalist and vocal coach for the team. <laughs> Mira, Aishna, Sanjeev, and, <laughs> and our storytellers for the evening, Sri Priyaji, without whose guidance, <laughs> without whose guidance, whenever her schedule allows, we would not be able to do what we do. Swamini Ji, who I have already gushed over enough. <laughs> <laughs> On the flute, Raj. <laughs> On harmonium and vocals, Jigs. <laughs> Myself on guitar. <laughs> My main man, Pari, on the keys. <laughs> Sunit on tabla. And last, but possibly most importantly, my right-hand man, quite literally, <laughs> and little bro Kishin. <laughs> Without whom, you might not realize none of this happens. <laughs> so, on that note, we will begin with opening <clears throat> prayers.
may first join the ashram. <clears throat> I had uh, in one of our first satsangs, um, Acharya Ji made this point about the most important thing is to be available. Of course, as Vedantic students, we know we have so many qualities we need, viveka, vairagya, shama, discipline, so many things. But he emphasized that we just have to be available for Gurudev to be able to use us. So as you will see through tonight's performance, I can't sing to save my life. <laughs> I can't play a musical instrument. And often when they're rehearsing and they lose a note, I'm not even sure what that means and where the note went. <laughs> and I'm not sure how you can lose a note. <laughs> Why do they keep losing the note? And yet, here I am, sitting up with them, having been involved in composing and creating not only these songs, but so many Shishi Vihar songs. And all I had to do was be available. And I didn't have to sing. People who could sing came. I didn't have to play an instrument. They came. Just be available for Gurudev to be able to create. What was needed? What can be useful? Until somebody else can do something better, we have this. So, Rohan made the mistake of inviting me to the rehearsal. <laughs> My brain always works on overtime, especially when I should be sleeping. So after the rehearsal, I didn't sleep. Of course, I just composed another song. <laughs> then woke up this morning and said, we should do this tonight. <laughs> and so spent two hours this morning creating the tune, fine tuning, what we would present to you that was created last night. And we didn't have enough singers for when we were fine tuning it, so we roped in Sri Priya. <laughs> <laughs> because she was available. <laughs> and that's all that's needed. And so total disclaimer, this was done in two hours this morning, but we have for you whole new Hanuman Bhajan to start the mood of how an amazing devotee Hanumanji is.
The lyrics were inspired because tonight, before each song, a theme of Hanuman's Jesus, Hanumanji's devotion um, is an underlying thing in all the songs. And so, loving Ram is who he is. Loving Ram is what he does. And so we see even in the next bhajan, where it said that there's no bhakta quite like Hanumanji. All the great bhaktas that we hear of, we see that they just totally immersed in this love that they feel for Bhagwan. And in Hanumanji, the stories really help us to be able to understand just how much Ram pervaded his being. And one of the really well-known Balvihar stories is that when Sitaji gave Ram Chandraji a necklace made out of pearls, which was very, very valuable, Hanumanji was then sitting on a tree, bright, biting into the pearls, opening it, looking, and throwing it away. And the other maidens in the palace started giggling and saying, see, Sitaji gave this beautiful necklace to a monkey, and of course he doesn't know the value of it. He's breaking these precious pearls. And, you know, not very discreetly did they say this, because Sitaji heard it. And of course, very embarrassed and annoyed that she is being talked about in this negative light, she goes up to Hanumanji and says, what are you doing? He very innocently says, I'm looking for Ram. <laughs> How are you going to find Ram in the pearls? As if you have Ram in you. And he immediately pulls open his heart to show Ram Lakshman Sita sitting in his heart. But more than that, from every pore, of his being, you could hear the name Ram resonating. And so beautiful is this, that it was just always there, whether he was thinking about it or not thinking about it, every single pore of his being always resonated with the sound of Ram, because that's all he thought about and all he felt. There's another story which is not as well known, but, you know, one of the cute ones, again, that I like to tell in the Balvihar class, Hanumanji was revealing, relieving himself, bathroom, and he was saying, Shri Ram, Jaya Ram, Jaya Jaya Ram, and one of these rishis walking past thought, how could you do that? <laughs> this is sacrilege. Like, sure, we're supposed to chant the name of the Ra Lord all the time, but it, uh, time and place. Not when you're going to the bathroom. <laughs> so the Rishi forbid Hanumanji to chant Rama's name as he was relieving himself. And so Hanumanji, but every pore of his being continued to chant Rama. Ram, Ram, Ram. He could seal his lips, but not stop the very beating of his heart and the very essence of who he is. There's no other devotee quite like Ram Hanumanji.
शक्ति नहीं जगत में जैसी है हनुमान की ऐसी भक्ति नहीं जगत में जैसी है हनुमान की ऐसी भक्ति नहीं जगत में जैसी है हनुमान की ओम हनु हनुमते श्री राम दुताय नमः ओम हनु हनुमते श्री राम दुताय नमः is also very very well known and one of the things he is known so famous for Hanumanji is indestructible cannot be beaten <clears throat> when we hear the story of love and Kush not as well known the story of love and Kush love and Kush grew up in Valmiki's ashram and their favorite thing to do was listen to the story of the Ramayan. And Valmiki, who wrote the Ramayan, was the one who taught it to them. And Sita Ji, who they didn't know was Sita Ji, they only knew her as Maya, knew all the details of the Ramayan which they learned. And so, Ram and Kush, I mean, Love and Kush, are singing in the palace the beautiful story of the Ramayana until they realize that they're sitting in front of all these characters that they're singing about. And so they get introduced. This is Bharat. This is Shatrugan. And they're so excited. This is Lakshman. This is Ram. This is Hanuman. And they're so ecstatic. And then they say, 
Where's Sita? And there's pin drop silence. And so they ask again, where's Sita Mega? Nobody answering. And then they get really angry. You mean she's not here? How come everyone else is here and Sita Maya is not here? And they have grown up, so they're about 16 at this age. They have grown up loving Ram Chandraji and the story of the Ramayan. And suddenly they feel so betrayed because Sita Ji is not there that they decide they're going to ruin this whole Ashwamedha Yagna that is going on at that point in time. So they get the horse and steal it and take it away. So now you know a yagna has to be completed. So they even know, this is how well they knew the story of the Ramai. They said, first, Shatrugan's going to come. He's going to use this arrow. They knew even which arrow he was going to use and so they knew how to counter it and they defeated Shatrugan. Now, Lakshman will come and he will use this arrow and they defeated him. Bharat will come, we know exactly which arrow he's going to use, and they defeated him. Then they looked at each other and said, uh-oh, now Hanuman's going to come. There's no arrow to defeat Hanuman. So they look at each other, and then they think, ah, we'll just start singing Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai. <laughs> And true enough, they sit down, Hanuman comes, and they start singing, Shri Ram, Jai Ram. And Hanuman Ji sits down with them, closes his eyes and singing, <laughs> Shri Ram, Jai Ram. And while he's closing his eyes singing, Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Ram, they take the vines from the trees and tie Hanuman Ji up to the tree, as if that's going to even do anything. No arrow can defeat Hanuman Ji. How is a vine going to keep his hand near a tree? And then, they take the horse and hide it. And they said, as long as you just keep chanting Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, he will be fine. We don't have to deal with him. Because they knew the only way to make Hanuman not take the horse back was to let him revel in the name of the Lord. They knew that would keep him captive. When we want Hanumanji, all we have to do is sing Rama's glory. And he will stay here, engrossed, willingly, as long as we keep singing. Chale Hanuman Ya Hai Shri Ram Ji Ki Dhun Machai
house here in the UK, and Umanji is very special to us. He is our presiding deity here of Chinmay Kirti. But he's also very special to everybody in Chinmay Mission because he stays in a very special ashram where our Puja Gurudev, where his Mahasamadhi is. That ashram is Chinmay Tapovan in Siddhavari, which is in a location where our Parma Guru Sri Tapovanji Maharaj had passed through on his travels. And in the uh, late 70s, Puja Gurudev passed also through this place, Kangra, when he was on his way back from a yajna. And uh, Puja Gurudev, having the vision that he had, saw that this would be the perfect place to have this ashram. And so the land was purchased, but that land is, it was completely barren at that time and the terrain was so difficult. But Puja Gurudev Sankalpa is infallible. And so construction began. But that construction was uh, affected by a lot of the sort of weather conditions in the area, right? You've seen how it is today outside. And as London people, we love to complain about the weather. There's a little bit of wind and a little bit of rain. So there, there were sort of gale force winds. It was making construction really difficult. So Puja Gurudev said, we should bring Hanumanji. He is the perfect person. He's the perfect, uh, perfect form of Bhagavan to make sure that this ashram gets constructed. And sure enough, you all know the story that Hanumanji was brought and the wind calmed and construction continued. But the other part of Puja Gurudev's vision is that everywhere there's an ashram, it's not just for Chinmay Mission people, it's for everyone who lives there. And that area was a place where Rishis and Munis had been living for centuries. And these Rishis and Munis would be doing their sadhana and doing their meditation. And so who would serve them? Who would bring them what they needed? Who would take care of them? It was the local Pahari people. And as part of this vision for Chinmay Tapovan Ashram, Puja Gurudev said that we have to make it so that we are able to serve these people who have been serving our saints and sages. This ashram is for them. When construction started, they were skeptical because anything new in the area, you know, people coming in from outside, they weren't sure how it would be. But meeting Puja Gurudev and seeing him and seeing how this whole ashram was coming up, by the time the ashram opened, these same Pahari people who were a little bit skeptical, they had taken Puja Gurudev as their own and they had taken Hanumanji as their own. And in fact, the praise that they used to sing for him is a song that we continue to sing today. It is beloved by all Balvihar children, not only Balvihar children, but those who are Balvihar children at heart also. And it is in praise of Hanuman as Veera.
When thinking about the thinking about Hanumanji, our go-to is the chalisa. It's almost synonymous. If we know Hanumanji, if we love Hanumanji, we sing chalisas. And it's become so incredibly popular. Um, as mentioned within the mission, Hanumanji is so popular. But for so many people, the minute they're scared or they're upset, Shri Gurajana Nisaro Jaraja, so much so that in Hong Kong, the Balvihar kids, if they're stuck in traffic or they have to get to an appointment on time, Shri Gurajana Nisaro Which I find highly amusing that they're using it even for such things. But you know, why not? Why not turn to him for even our smallest needs and desires? The Chalisa was written by Tulsi Dasji in Audi. In our Vedic culture, it's very clear that mantras from the Vedas are the most powerful. Hmm. Stotrams and compositions by saints and sages usually don't have the same standing as Vedic mantras. This is 100% true, except Hanuman Chalisa. Embedded in the Hanuman Chalisa are many, many Bij mantras. And it's interwoven so beautifully that these Bij mantras aren't even recognized. But even more importantly, the more potent something is, the more dangerous it can also be. Yeah. And so when beach mantras are not used with the right guidance, it can sometimes cause side effects. But in the Hanuman Chalisa, they're so safe that we don't even know we're saying them. And yet it's so potent that we can see the effect and the power of the Chalisa without even knowing how it's so powerful because Tulsi Dasji so brilliantly interwove these beach mantras in such a safe way. We don't know it's there. We just like the tune. Or we just like thinking of Hanumanji. And it's long enough to keep our attention. It just makes us feel safe. That's what the Chalisa does. Just makes us feel safe. Shri Guru Charana Saroj Raja
as Swamini Ji said, when we sing the Hanuman Chalisa, we feel safe. Hanuman Ji inspires that feeling in us. And one of the reasons is when we see Hanuman Ji, he always looks so capable. You don't look at Hanuman Ji and think, I wonder if Hanuman Ji can, can do this. Is he strong enough? Is he brave enough? Hanumanji faces his own obstacles so intelligently, so creatively. When he's jumping across the ocean to reach Lanka, whether it's the Menaka mountain that rises up, or Surasa, who is trying to grab him in her jaws, whether it's his shadow being caught, or even Lankini, who's standing at the gates of Lanka and ready to, ready to fight him, Hanumanji faces all those obstacles with so much grace and so much ease that we, we feel inspired just hearing about how he did that. But Hanumanji not only faces his own obstacles, Hanumanji is someone who we see removing others' obstacles and others' sorrows again and again and again. When we first meet Hanumanji in the Ramayana, it's with Sugriv. Sugriv, who is so persecuted by his own brother that he's afraid to stay in one place for longer than a few days. He's terrified. Hanumanji brings Bhagavan to Sugriv. Sugriv problem is solved. Not only Sugriv, when Sitaji is kidnapped and all the monkeys are being sent to find her. All of them go, but Bhagavan gives Hanumanji the ring because he knows Hanumanji is the one who is going to find her. Hanumanji reaches Sitaji first and she is in this deep sorrow and terrible grief and agony of separation. Just repeating the Lord's name again and again and again She's staring at her own feet. She's not even looking around anywhere. And Hanumanji comes and relieves her of her sorrow. Bhagavan is coming. Hanumanji goes back to Bhagavan because as much as Sitaji is missing Bhagavan, he is also thinking of her. And he goes and says, she's okay, she's waiting for you. Hanumanji relieves Bhagavan of his sorrow. In Lanka, he meets Vibhishana, who is pining for Bhagavan. Vibhishana sees Hanumanji and knows everything's going to be okay. Bhagavan is coming. When Lakshmanji is struck down on the battlefield and that Sanjeevani plant has to be brought, Hanumanji goes and he picks up the whole mountain. And throughout the Ramayana, as much as Bhagavan grieved when Sitaji was kidnapped, he also knew that he would find her. But when Lakshman falls, Bhagavan is absolutely distraught. And Hanumanji is the one who revives Lakshmana. He removes Bhagavan's sorrow. Finally, the war is won. Sitaji is returned to Bhagavan. And they are on their way back to Ayodhya. And just outside Ayodhya is Bharat, who has been waiting for 14 years for Bhagavan, who has been living below ground. Because if Bhagavan have to, has to walk barefoot on the ground, Bharatji has to be lower than him. There is one day remaining and Bharat is ready to give up his life. Hanumanji comes and Bharat knows everything is going to be okay. Bhagavan is coming. When we see Hanumanji, we know everything is going to be okay. Bye.
कहा प्रभु देखी विचारो कौन सो संकट मोही गरीब को जीत बच्चो नहीं जाते हैं तारो to so much uh, so quickly and so you see on Instagram even these fusion dance mixes between Bharatanatyam and pop or you see uh, Bollywood being mixed with Zumba or Garba workouts being mixed with aerobics <laughs> okay very cool And we see this fusion in food. We see this fusion in dance. We see this fusion in music. A way for us to blend the two worlds that we live in. To bring different creativity demands we bring more different. And, but to not lose its beauty and its authenticity and its significance. <clears throat> During COVID, when we were in Hong Kong and nobody was traveling, lots of people wanted to do different things. And so this group of Russians living in Hong Kong contacted me to learn the Mrityam Jaya Mantra. And they were coming weekly. I was really fascinated how they found me and why they wanted to be doing this. And so then they, you know, very, confidently and, and proudly, they said to me, we do kirtan every week. <laughs> I said, oh, really? Wow, that's amazing. You all sing? No. <laughs> then we get together and we play YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so sad for them. <laughs> but that also made me think how beautiful a tradition we have, that we just have it and don't think much of it. We sing bhajans, we sing kirtan, we do namavalis, we sing the stotrams, and it's so much a part of our culture. We wake up in the morning and somebody in the house is humming something, or it's playing in the background as we're cooking. We get into the car, it's halfway through. There are people who are so thirsty for it, so hungry for it, and why? Why would they want to be doing kirtan? Of course, it fills them. 
Of course, it adds beauty to their life. Of course, it, it must be meaningful for people outside of our culture to be looking for it. And so it's so beautiful that in the mission we have Swaranjali and we keep Kirtan going continuously, alive in its truest form, in its funnest form, and in new forms. So I congratulate this group, but also the Swaranjali group in London for all these years, for keeping this culture alive, and for all of you for supporting it. Hey. <clears throat> Hari Om, just before we conclude, um, so you all have been sitting and enjoying for an hour and 15 minutes. Um, this group has been meeting since last year every Tuesday evening from 7.30 till 9, sometimes later. Um, sometimes there are three or four people, sometimes there are 10 or 15. But they have been consistently practicing and really putting so much effort and love into what you've seen today. Um, so a really, really big thank you to the whole group for all of your love and devotion and your efforts, of which we're enjoying the fruit this evening. Um, thank you to all of you. Um, thank you also to the EV team, um, to Sans, to Preet, um, to Suresh Uncle, who is really like jack of all trades. <laughs> um, thank you all for making sure everything went smoothly this evening. Thank you to those of you who, there were obviously the ushers and those who helped set up the hall, the worker bees in the background. Um, thank you to you all for being here tonight with us. Um, thank you to Swamini Ji for gracing us with her presence and making this evening even more more special. Um, Hari Om. Now that we've invited Hanumanji into our hearts, as Swamini Ji said, let's aim to keep our minds on Ram so Hanumanji always stays with us along with his strength. We are so lucky today to get a taste of Swamiji's brilliant storytelling. If you just cannot get enough like me, Swamiji has her own podcast called Thinking About It, where she breaks down the highest truth in language that is easily accept accessible and understandable for us. So please do check it out. It's displayed on the screens. And if you want to continue basking in the glories of Hanumanji and these beautiful melodies of the Chalisa, Make sure to join us for our flagship event of Hanuman Jayanti coming up on 21st of April here in the Kirti. It's going to be a whole day of the Chalisa sung in various tunes and melodies um, and the vibes, you just have to be there to feel it. Keep an eye out for other events of the Chinmaya Mission um, on our socials and we hope to see you at future events. Have a good evening and Hari Om. <laughs> Also coming up is London's own podcast oh. on the Ramayan, which will also feature tunes from this Swaranjali and original Swaranjali. So keep an eye out for that as well. Oh.
Oh 